Hello, ladies and gents. Jack here from Peach Guitars, and today I'm joined by a special guest. We've got Pedro here from UA, this time on camera. Welcome, hey. Pedro. <laughs> Hi there, thank you. So, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about with Universal Audio right now. Really important company for us, and there's a lot of stuff that we want to get into, not least of which is the Ox. So, mm -hmm. I think for a lot of you watching, the Ox is really the guitar product for UA for a long time. It's fair to say now that's changed because we've got the pedals. Yeah. Tons and tons of pedals. Amazing, amazing pedals. But the Ox really was the thing that made UA a name known to guitar players. I think that's fair to say. And it's been what? It's fair to say. Five, six years, maybe more? Sounds about right. Yeah, five, three. Yeah, I would say five. Yeah. So we thought it would be time for a recap. And in fact, we've never even touched the Ox on the channel here before. So we wanted to cover it a little bit. So we'll explain a little bit about what it does if you're unaware, but the reason we wanted to do this now is that there's some new features to Ox mm -hmm. um, that coincide with you know, UA just moving forwards as they always do. So we're gonna talk about that stuff, but just to recap before we go any further, what is the Ox? So the Ox will allow you to play your electric guitar amplifier through the aux to either give you just a reactive load box mm -hmm. allowing you to reduce the level going into the speaker of your own guitar amp yeah that would be the reactive side but you also have the opportunity to take advantage of the emulations of different speakers we have as part of the software of aux to then completely modify the tone of your electric guitar and take yeah. it further Okay, yes. so you can, there's multiple ways you can play with aux, or you can even play completely silent in the room and just listen through the emulations on headphones. Dead on. Okay, so yeah, basically it was the first of its kind as well to do all of that in one thing. So you've got speaker simulation, microphone simulation, attenuation, yeah. uh, direct line out to front of house. And just for context today, we're not using any speaker cab. I've got yep. the, the Z28 uh, Dr. Z amp that we use all the time. So any crucial differences in the tone you're going to be hearing today will be entirely from the aux because this is the amp you hear on the channel all the time. <laughs> so I'm plugged straight into the amp with this SG. The aux is plugged straight into our Apollo uh, Universal Audio interface as well. There's nothing being colored there. There's no uh, extra plugins or anything like that. So everything you're hearing is straight from the aux. And we're just monitoring it in the room with a pair of studio monitors as well. But as Pedro touched on, you've got the option to use your existing speaker cabinet if you want which won't then have any filtering or modeling done to it no. but you can attenuate it with this control here so we're not doing that today there's going to be plenty of other videos out there on the ox already with people explaining it in a bunch of different situations yeah. but everything you're hearing today is straight out of the back of this thing yeah so, yeah, so the reason i'm holding my ipad is the way you can control the ox is via the free app that we have available for the iPad, or you can do it from your computer, so whatever you prefer. Yeah. It's important to mention that you don't need to have the app running while, you know, Aux is... For it to make sounds. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so you can just leave it, uh, you know, whatever tweaks we do in here, you can flash it into one of the six rig presets you have in here. Yeah. And those presets, you can, you know, recall them at any time and move on, okay? It's the right balance, I think, because you've got enough hardware control, like you say, that you can just plug into it and go. Mm -hmm. And then you've got separate controls here for the amount of the room mics that you want to hear. Mm -hmm. That's just done on this control. Yeah. And then you've got your individual volumes for various outputs. But mm -hmm. if you really want to get in depth, and it's the same deal with the, the pedals, which we've talked about in the past, you can just plug into them and play. But if you want to tweak, you yeah. can tweak. Yeah, and, and definitely that's what the whole app thing is about. Yeah, with the, uh, with the Aux, it's a bit of a, if you want, is a bit of a tweak as the light. You can really go deep. So if you feel like with the amp uh, pedals that we have, you know, the technology that you're hearing on Aux made its way to those pedals. That's where we, you know, the room modeling you're hearing on the Woodrow, on Ruby, that's the technology coming from Aux. Sure. 
And, uh, but if you want to take it way further and have the opportunity to control not only the amount of room in there, but also like the type of microphones you want to be using in there. So you have ribbon stereo, different types of condenser stereo, uh, different types of microphones, and always a bit of an information why those microphones are relevant. So even if you're not as familiar, yeah. you know, because maybe production is so much, not so much your background, but, you know, we've made sure to select certain microphones that will be a good choice and an exciting choice to give you some, you know, fantastic tones. Well, I said this about UA before, where they've done all the thinking for you. So unlike other systems which have come along since, which, you know, there's no bad product out there I, in, as far as I'm concerned. There's so many great uh, things that do this job. But UA have done all the thinking for you. And it's important to point out as well, which you stressed to me, these aren't impulse responses these no. are not whereas most other products out there now use like a static snapshot of a microphone on a speaker mm -hmm. and you can have millions of those if you want but that's not what this is doing this is a totally different type of tech right yeah so it's our very own technology so we're using you know dynamic room modeling and also for the speaker which is another control that we have here with the speaker drive which effectively is also taking into account the age of the speakers of the simulation you were running to giving you all this variety in tones not only yeah. you can switch speakers all together which obviously will have a, a huge impact yeah, yeah. where we can play with speaker drive i tell you what so i'm gonna and it's also it. how hard the speaker's being hit right so like if you had a if this amp were powering a cabinet, the more you turn the amp up, the speaker is getting hit harder and that changes the sound of the speaker as well. So yeah, so we'll exp let's explore that first then. Yeah. So I'll show you the, the clean tone. I also didn't want to do what a lot of other people do with these kind of things and think, well, just because I can, I'm going to turn my amp up to 10. <laughs> because it genuinely- I thought you were supposed to go to 11. Well, or 11 in fact. And generally, here's a secret for you folks. It usually doesn't sound very good. So I've got this about halfway, so you're still hearing enough detail in the amp, and you're actually going to hear more of the effect that that has. So if you're trying an OX or any of this kind of uh, cabinet-less setup for yourself, my number one tip is just don't turn the amp up full, because it probably won't sound good. Anyway, here we go. Here's what it sounds like right now. So that's completely dry. That's 50%, sorry. Okay, so that's with the speaker drive at 50%, but there's no reverb. Is there any room? We have a little there? bit of room, okay. just a touch. We could mute that just to give people an idea. Yeah, know, okay, let's we... do that. No room, 50% speaker drive. Shall we go completely zero to speaker drive or fully? Yeah, let's do that. So we'll go completely off and gradually bring it up and I'll just play the same thing. Okay, so I'll just slide it in as you play. Slide it in as I play, Pedro. Let's do Here it. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't really add any overdrive to the amp. The, the amp tone stays the same, but it's changing the, the feel. Like, and also, you noticed um, that kind of ghost note thing happening a little yes. bit. Like when you, when you have a really loud speaker cab, the speakers start to do weird yeah. so physical things. So you're bringing the, the, that comb cry of you know, an aged speaker that's, yeah. you know, yeah, which with impulse responses is just it not possible. really possible. And the nice thing is you, it's not on or off, it's not binary. That's a really smooth linear control. Yes, that you so, can tweak. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's one feature. That's just one feature. Yeah, we haven't so, even delved into the different speaker types and the different microphones. So what are we actually hearing right now in terms of the cab and the microphones? So we actually hearing one of the five new cabs that come with the update. Uh, we're hearing a four by 12 British 30 watt speaker. Okay. You, you know, there's always a little bit of a blurb uh, that you will have around every single speaker just to give an idea, you know, what they yeah. are doing. So we're not naming names, but if you know, you know what 
you know you do. is trying to do. Yeah. Uh, I pulled back the, uh, the room sound just because, again, you know, we forget how much of a guitar tone the room also has such a, a lovely impact. So we brought that back in. Yep. And then on our left, uh, so the aux outputs in stereo, that's what you're hearing right now. So on your left side, we have a dynamic 57. Uh, there's no extra EQing going on in there. And on your right side, we have a 414 condenser microphone, which then we can, you know, start tweaking away uh, with different microphones, putting in off axis to give you a completely different, you know, slightly different tone if you want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you can take it even further and completely remove from one of the, the sides you are recording. So let's say on microphone two, we can select a direct sound. So you turn all of the speaker and microphone modeling off. So if you wanted to then use uh, in your recording software, your own IRs or other forms of speaker simulation, yeah. which I really like, just to have the, the option to do that is really beneficial because sometimes you might record something, think it sounds great and then listen back to it and think, oh no, I wish I could change it. That's like an insurance policy. Yeah, so yeah. And, and again, you know, I think it's also quite interesting. There's a, you know, like you said, like you could reamp it. So, you know, put yeah. it through one of our, uh, you know, one of our pedals if you want it. Of course, use impulse responses or mm -hmm. even just from an editing point of view, it makes your life way easier to just have your clean guitar in there because yeah. it will be easier for you to pinpoint the transit. So at this point, now that we have on my left side, on my left output of the aux, I'll have the microphone and the emulation, I can then, while I'm recording on my interface, what I can then now do is have my left side just become one mono track and my right output of the aux become another mono track, which will be my clean track. And then I pan completely to the left, the room modeling and effectively. So it only affects the emulated signal. Yes. Okay. Let's and you get the whole, you know, side of that. So have you got it muted right now, the right channel? I've muted the right channel and you should okay. be hearing just the one. So you're going to hear just the emulation, then Pedro is going to add in the speakerless. Yeah, which just tone. be prepared. Yeah, it's just be the, prepared for that. Uh, the, <laughs> Here we go. So there you have it. So for this yeah. example, I kind of brought it, everything down the middle so it wouldn't be too distracted to kind of be assaulted by that DI on Do your you know right what, ear. Some people like that sound. That's very true as well. So. I've come to like that sound. Yeah, that's... I don't mind it. Yeah. It, again, it was working for this riff for sure. In a track, you know, it, and that's the beauty of this is that you can just feather things in and out and it's, it's not that binary experience that I talked about before with some products where you know, they give you what they give you and it's either on or off. Mm. I love the workflow of this and, you know, I'm not usually one for delving into apps and stuff like that, but you can imagine you just have that on your desk all the time. Yeah. And then if you want to go out and gig, it's a different story because you just store it to the rigs. And I was about to say, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you can have all that tweaking, preparing, create a tone that you really love and then obviously save the preset in here and whatever presets you love the most, you can just put it in the rig. So you don't even need to worry about the computers, just dial, dial and mm -hmm. off you go. So just recall them as you go. Lovely. Okay. So what we can do now is hear some of the different speaker cabs. Yes. We've heard the difference that the, having an actual model on there, you know, as opposed to nothing at all. Yeah. We've heard what that does. So let's go from that four by 12 to something really different. I yeah. Guess. Let's so stick with another one of the new ones. So let's go ones. with the, Four by twelve UK VE thirty. Okay. So even it's a weird sensation to try and explain because we're in quite a big room and we've got a couple of uh, studio speakers in front of us. So it's not the same 
mm. feeling. And this is something that's really got to stress here because a lot of people will play this kind of setup and because it doesn't feel like a guitar speaker cab, it just, you know, it really rocks rocking your brain. Your belt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really, it just takes a minute to get used to it. But with this more so than any other system I've tried with the studio monitors here, you still feel the nuances of, so I can tell that was a different cab because mm. the bass response was different, even through small studio monitors. When I cleaned up the guitar as well, because the amp isn't too overdriven, you can feel that as well. It's not just an audible thing, it's, it is a feel thing. And hopefully it's going to come across well to you because you're going to be hearing it in stereo. And, but even in the room, in a big room, on weird studio monitors that are far away, you still feel the difference. And that's something I just want to try and put across because that isn't always the case, but it is here. So we also hear in some of the room sound yeah in so we haven't increased the level but we can really kind of you know go to town let's try that let's yeah, try that because i think that's one of the feel um mm. factors as well that's really yeah. important and yeah. it makes it really feel good under the fingers so i'll play some more single note stuff and see how the the room yeah i'll bring it in so again i could have done it from the app but i'll have you know you guys will have visual representation of the app moving as i move the, the room control in here physically sure. which is quite nice let's do that let's do that <laughs> Yeah, big difference. And again, this is one of those things where in isolation like this, that might sound like a really extreme tone. Mm. But if you're recording or if you're yeah. playing in a band mix, that's the kind of thing you need. You need that level of control. And again, they've done all the thinking for you where that's the sound that's proven to work Yeah, in you, a mix. You put it like this, maybe, you know, if you are a, already have a quite dense mix and all of a sudden your solo guitar is in a big room, it will inevitably already found its place. So it's less EQing for you to do and yeah. it lives already in the mix in a way that perhaps requires way less effort. From that was something, like, when I first played an Ox years ago, I haven't played one for quite some time before today, I remember thinking that it's like, it's more mid-rangey than a lot of the other uh, okay. products of this type. You know, and when you play with IRs, they're often quite, scooped in their mid-range and then you hear them in a mix it's like where's my guitar hmm. whereas this has more inherent mid-range and so it just sits better to me and that's why i think it's persisted because even though there's several other products come out since a lot of people still buy these and a lot of people still use them and love them and i think it's got something to do with that it's just already it just sits in the right place so you've still got loads of options and you can eq and all that stuff but yeah in terms of plug and play experience, this is probably the best product for that. Damn. And also it's not just about replacing your amp, but adding to it as well. Yep. Because you can have, if you've got your actual speaker cab hooked up, you then, with the line outs, you can have two completely different signals going and have wet, dry, wet and all this you know, crazy stuff. And that's worth talking now about the other new thing here, which is the effects and the ability to switch them in and out, which yep. The effects were always there. You could always have effect, effects on your speaker sim. So we've got EQ, we've got compression, delay, and reverb. Yeah, but which now, will go on your master channel. Yes, so and it won't affect the room sound or? It, it will go after. It just affects everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but now we have the option to foot switch those things. So we've got this uh, UA zone, but it's just a TRS foot switch so any three button switch could do this as long as it's TRS. That's uh, just you know any uh, foot switch pedal will do so you you know yeah. any 
flip switch of wood, up to three pedals, as long as it's CRS cable going into the back of aux, which will receive your speaker, uh, yeah. you know, your foot switch, that's all you need. So it's not gotcha. a okay. proprietary one. So then you decide in the app what those switches do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to enable that performance side and allow you to do all those crazy setups we were talking about, so you can have your own speaker on stage with you, but then feeding front of house with the emulations mm -hmm. and have all those controls. So uh, we've set it up so switch one will engage EQ and compression, so good place to start. Yep. Then switch two will be our delay and finalize it all with some reverb and you can just stack them all together. So Yeah, so they were, always, they were already a nice thing to have but being able to turn them on and off now, like you alluded to there, it's more of a performance-based thing. Mm. You can now use this as a live tool to not only have some effects, but I really like having the EQ and the compressor because that's your lead boost. Yeah. If you want. So can we see what the EQ looks like? Right yeah, now? yeah, so yeah. So we had a bit of fun flat? of that with that earlier. And uh, we actually done already some EQing yeah. and kind of, yeah. You had a bit of a play, just kind of boost it a little bit. To Boosted give you the mids a little bit and cut some lows. And that's what a lead, a lead boost would mean to me. So mm -hmm. that you, so you're going to hear the cut. So, and you've also got the compression yep. that's going to come in here. So switch it on. Let's have a play. I'll turn the switch on and you'll hear the difference. <laughs> Because yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't, again, in isolation like this, it doesn't sound like a huge difference. In a mix, that would work. That would just make your lead cut. It doesn't even need to increase the volume that much. Yeah, you, you, you know, we could do that if yeah, we wanted to. Yeah, of course, to. yeah, if you want it. Like, you can, we can always compensate for that, you know. Obviously, we were, you know, yeah, it was, we were riding that needle, you know, of the compressor, but we could just compensate it back if we want it. Yeah. And obviously, from there, just stack and add the other effects. You can select when you switch, the first switch, whatever combination. So if you are in one pedal push, if you wanted to go straight into EQ, uh, compression, and yeah. delay, just one pedal, you can do that. So it's whatever combination it's useful for you, but you have three yeah, options to play with. Option. And the compression feels really good as well. It's like having, it's not like adding a pedal where it kind of feels two dimensional mm. because this is post everything, you know, it's post the amp. And it's post the speaker as well, isn't it? Mm. So the compression just gives you this real three-dimensional lift if you want it to. Or it can smooth out the rough edges. You know, it's a really useful tool. Yeah, whatever adjustments you make on the compressor. So we're using, you know, our very own 1176 kind of, which is great on guitars, come on. It certainly is, it certainly is. So that's number one. Number two and three we've got for delay and reverb right now, <laughs> uh, respectively. So let's hear the delay. And you've got a fair bit of control over the delay yeah. too, right? But just straight out of the box, it sounded good. So again, it's kind of a different sensation than using a pedal or even a pedal in the effects loop of the amp because it's completely after everything. Mm. It's really crisp. Uh, so what kind of delay is that? That it would be like uh, our precision delay. Oh, okay. So it is like a super clean mm. digital yeah. delay. And are there different delay types? Yeah, we are, so you're currently using a dual delay where we could have gone like a crossover delay, ping pong, chorus, because obviously those are you know, time-based effects. Okay, let's do that. Let's Even do that, flanging. please.
yeah, so we have some presets for that as well. So. And that's all from delay? Yeah, because yeah, it's a time-based effect, so you can have chorus, flanges, and stuff like that. And uh, obviously you can tweak it until you're happy with it, or just cheat like I did and just use some use cool presets. Preset. Yeah, but the presets sound good. And then you can just turn it off like that. Yeah. And it's done. So the reverb as well, it's the last thing I want to explore. It sounds great. It adds something. So this is an amp with no reverb at all. You've been hearing everything completely dry so far. Except for that room that we added in there. Apart from the room, yes, you're right. So now with the verb. Oh, it's big. Plate reverb. It's yeah. big. And it's fully stereo, of course, as well. So that's just a plate. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it does. Very nice. Very nice. Is yeah, there anything they, springy in there as well? Yeah, so we have, that's the plate reverb. The only thing I did is I kind of increased the pre-delay, so just give you a bit more, more space and room in there. Nice. A uh, bit of a low cut. Nice. And again, we have a bunch of presets that we can then you know, take from there. So we started on the default and tweaked a little bit, but you can go anywhere from 50s twang to all sort of craziness like warm clouds. <laughs> So yeah, those presets are absolutely glorious. Very warm indeed. And then you could turn all three, all four, in fact, you could turn all four on. There we go. So I just love that you can switch those now mm. without having to use the app. I think that about covers everything we want yeah. to talk about with Ox. So hopefully if you hadn't heard of Ox before, that kind of gives you a full picture. If you had, you now understand some of the updates that have been made. If this isn't the thing for you though, UA have you covered as well, because not only do they make great plugins, pedals, they also make great interfaces too, which is something we'll probably cover in the future. So if you want to actually translate what you're hearing into your own computer setup and so on, you can do that with uh, the, the new Vault interfaces as well, which we haven't got here today, but they're going to be coming here on the channel very soon. I'm sure you'll hear all about that. So there's just so much stuff from UA that we wanted to cover, but I felt it was right to talk about the OG, the original thing that kind of put UA on the guitar player's map back a few years ago. It's still just as important and useful as ever. So thank you very much, Pedro. Thank you, Jack. We got there in the end. If you want to find out more information about the Ox or any other UA products, head to the website, link in the description below. But thank you very much for watching. Let us know your thoughts down below. Leave a like, hit subscribe, all of that YouTube stuff. See you soon. Bye-bye.